everybody and welcome back to Outcast Studios. I hope you've all had a lovely time while you've been away. Today, as you might be able to tell, I am once again no longer joined by the thinnest of rubies, Thinner Ruby. That is because, due to the British heat, the man has decided to go on a second holiday. The Tory fucker. I can't even afford to have one, never mind two. But either way, as he isn't here, today's or the next few, should I say, Anadonia episodes will be hosted by yours truly and yours truly alone. So without much further ado, let's get started. And what a way to introduce things than if I were to zoom back out again. Check out the sky, my guys. Yeah, so if you're wondering why it was so dark outside, that's why. <laughs> um, so I have been busy. I have been very busy in between episodes. And in fact, you can see how busy I've been because let's not just show you the result. Let's show you me making the result. Here's a time lapse for you. Enjoy. So yeah, bit of a weird time lapse, I will admit. Uh, to be honest, I kept getting bored after like spending an hour on making the camera follow me, so I kept zooming back out to try and capture the whole thing. But if we just fly all the way up here, you can see how big this netting is. And I mean, it's not even finished. You can see from the, the ghost blocks there. We're not done. Um, but, you know, it is causing a lot of shadows down below. Uh, I'm hoping that when I get this thing fully operational, the shadows will disappear when the blocks do. Um, whoops. But um, if they don't, we might have to come up with another solution. That's probably the like hardest part about doing all of this. It's not that it took forever. It's not that it's pointlessly tedious. It's that it might all be for no goddamn reason. Yeah, if this turns out to not work, like if it's too many blocks for the multiple generators to handle, because these things have a limit. It's a big fucking limit, but they have one. They can only support 32,768 blocks each. And I mean, that sounds like a lot, but if I just open a uh, schematic placements, configure, and then if I look at the material list, if I show all... Surely it's got to be in here, right? Why is it not showing up? Uh, write to file? Can I do that? Yeah, if I just have a look at this materials list now, if I go down here... Oh, that's weird. There, it, It's saying that there's zero materials, but I mean, clearly there are. Um, interesting. But it, it's a lot of blocks, okay? It's a lot of... It's a lot of fucking blocks. And it might all be for nothing if it's too many. Uh, so that ought to be fun. But that's not what we're focusing on right now. I also don't know how to get rid of the material checklist missing chunks in the corner, so I'm just gonna hope that that goes away on its own. No, for today, while yes, the, the, the actual shield is very important, it's not what we're focusing on. What we're focusing on is generating the power required to keep these things up and running. Because we have a lot of sources of power. We have the brand new windmill from Create that I created to make a a conveyor belt down below, which, you know what, that's a good point. If you don't watch Starsick, this next part might be a shock to you. But, uh, man's been busy. So I already created the time lapse of this, and it should be in... Actually, it should be in tomorrow's Starsick episode when this shows up, which is just kind of showing you how out of order these things are being filmed. Uh, but I created this in order to create myself a mechanical arm to help with the automation of starlight production, one of these guys. Because it requires a precision mechanism that can only be got by putting cogwheels, large cogwheels, and iron nuggets together five times over, which is what this thing does. But that windmill that we saw upstairs comes down here to power this machine because the water wheel 
surprisingly wasn't strong enough. We also have the tier um, 6, I believe it is, solar panel. We have the tier 6 solar panel um, that we created in last... Uh, last Star Sick episode. I know time. Yeah, we created that one in Tuesday's, last Tuesday's episode of Star Sick in order to power the computer. And let me tell you, this thing is powerful. This, this is very powerful. This thing is currently storing 31 million, nearly 32 million uh, FE, which I believe is... Uh, Actually, I don't know what FE is. I know what RF is. I, I, I never actually bothered to learn what FE is. Uh, but it, it, it it's really good. And it's running at 100% efficiency, which is brilliant. Which is also surprising, considering... Uh, then again, direct sunlight. But of all those methods of power generation, we don't have the means to transport it, or at least not right now. And we have two ways that we could go about solving that. Step one is cables. Yes, that's right. We have a lot of different types of cable that we can use. We have these. Uh, we have these energy cables from power. We have uh, energy hopper. Energy hoppers. What the hell are they? We have. Um, we have energy exporters and importers from integrated tunnels. Uh, I although integrated tunnels is a little too complicated for my uh, dumb dumb brain to comprehend. We have the energy cables from Cyclic, but I don't trust Cyclic cables as far as I can throw them. We also have energy cubes, which can be charged up and then placed down after being picked up by uh, a wrench. And then uh, we have an energy pipe from Pipes, which I'm a little more likely to trust. And then, of course, we have my favorite choice, which is the Entangled Block from the Entangled mod. But that is very expensive. Mainly because it had its recipe changed to fit in with all the mod 6. But this requires an Obtainium, and if I remember correctly, not only does this not have an EMC value, as you can, well, See? But I'm pretty sure in our entire time playing on this server, we've only ever managed to get a hold of a single nugget of unobtainium. We have vibranium over here, which can be used to create uh, vibranium ingots, which can then be used to create a, a whole bunch of stuff. A vibranium chest plate, a bracelet template, a bl bracelet blueprint, mirrors, uh, because, you know, whoever decided to uh, code the recipe decided to make it use the most expensive thing it can find. Uh, vibranium furnace, a ring blueprint, uh, vibranium armor, Vibranium energy cells. It's just a whole bunch of stuff, really. Vibranium powder, thrusters. The atomic disassembler requires vibranium now? The eter- Ooh. The eternal stellar. You know, if we managed to get a hold of some vibranium, we could probably make this. And then just a bunch of different repair kits. But not the point. What the entangled block allows us to do is quite literally quantum entangle whatever we choose. And what that means for those uninitiated is imagine that this oak log was this oak log. Now, imagine that this brass casing was also this oak log. I don't mean that this is just another oak log, or that it is from the same tree. I mean that it is the exact same oak log, right down to the very atoms that comprise it. But it's also here. It is in two places at once. This piece of the universe exists in this position and this position at the same time. That's what it is. If I broke this block, this block would disappear because they are the exact same thing, just in two places in space at the same time. That's what quantum entangling does, which means if this was a chest, I would be able to open this chest and the inventories would be the same thing. Another example of this would be the unintentional quantum entanglement I created when setting up the uh, the raid from the, the big The Raid video, when all of the loot chests ended up sharing the same inventory, because I did a whoopsie. But the point is, that's what quantum entanglement is. I say this is really good but the convenience of it isn't worth trying to find an obtainium. So, we're gonna invest in some power cables. I'm also gonna very quickly log out of the game to get rid of the materials list on the side of my screen, because I have no idea how to get rid of that. Okay, so while I was doing the intro, I admit I was thinking from a more, um, I guess, conservative viewpoint when it comes to conserving the resources we have. Um, and I was thinking of maybe setting up a giant solar array, maybe back here with the, the main controls and the already existing create um, windmill that had uh, pipes or energy cables that ran through the mountains to the individual uh, shield generators. But then I remembered that we don't have to play this conservatively. Due to the fact that we just made a ton 
of the um, solar panels for Starsick, we can make all of these shield generators entirely self-sufficient. I just have to find where I put the spares. Because if you think about it, it makes sense for them to be as self-sufficient as possible. Because if, just for example, if the, the the people that, you know, we're fighting, I I don't even remember their name. Hold on. Let me go ask Guri. Okay, according to uh, the uh, scriptures or like the inf in, in information and intel and stuff that they gather gathered, the people we're fighting are called Cat in Box, which is very um, weird name if you ask me. Uh, but it makes sense because imagine if Cat in Box decided that instead of trying to break through the shield all at once, they were instead going to focus a, a, a beam or uh, uh, several explosives, or just constantly barrage one specific point of the shield, just enough to create an opening. All they would have to do is create that opening right above our solar array, damage it, destroy... M it, it wouldn't even have to be all of it, it'd, it'd just have to be part of it, and the entire shield would go down, because it would all be relying on that one solar array. Whereas if we make these things self-sufficient, they would have to individually take out every single one of these projectors in order to fully take down the shield. And while yes, having a part of the shield go offline would be detrimental to our defense, it'd be better than having the whole thing shut down. Because that would still be a hell of a lot of space that they would not be able to attack from. So I think our best bet would be to line the edges of the emitter with their own dedicated solar panel system. How I'd feed it in would be another question. I might have to make a modification to the design in order to get the cables in, because we can't f we can't feed it through the top. The top part has to have these blocks coming out to connect it to the actual shield. So it needs to be from underneath, but solar panels from underneath wouldn't work. I need, I need to think about this. In fact, you know what? I don't need to think about this. I need to find the fucking solar panels because they're not in my backpack. Well, the tier five ones are, I'm, uh, but I'm looking for the tier sixes. Okay, you know what? I'm fucking sick of spawning down here. The only reason I have left the, the, the waystone down here is because all of my stuff is still here. The next chance I get, I'm moving all of this. I cannot be fucked with spawning down here every single time. But the reason I'm here is because... There we go. I figured that I'd left all of, a stu all of my stuff in the chests. Uh, solar panel tier 2? No. Tier 4? Definitely not. Uh, shield projectors? Why did I have these spare? Whatever. Uh, tier 6. Here we go. I knew I had some laying around. Also, check out my infinite starlight generator. This thing is absolutely PogChamp. Although, it's so PogChamp, I ran out of space. <laughs> so, um, next Starsic episode, I'm going to be investing in trying to find some uh, bigger storage. Well, bigger fluid storage. You know, I almost feel bad about constantly flying through this base. I put, I put all of this effort into making it look nice, and I just don't stick around to... to, to to walk through it, because I can just fly everywhere. Okay, so now that we have the solar panels, we need some cables. Let's just check, make sure we don't have any already in here. We have, ooh, 51 uh, KF uh, per tick. And I believe there's 20 ticks in a second. So if we just do the math on that, uh, it's 51, uh, we'll drop the 0.20 for now. Actually, no, no, we won't, 51.20. Per tick, 51 times 20, uh, we can just do 51 times 10, which would make it 512 uh, KFE per half a tick, per half a second rather, and then double that to 1024, 1024 uh, KF per second, and considering this generates 2048 FE per Tick? Holy shit, these cables are gonna cause one hell of a fucking bottleneck. Dear god. We need to find some better cables. Okay, so advanced universal cables, not as advanced as you might think. Now, the solar panels come from a mod known as Solar Flux Reborn. So if we type in Solar Flux... Oh, uh, they don't have any cables. I thought I could have found some. Okay, let's do energy... No, that's not how you spell energy. Let's try and find some really good cables. Now, these look better. Energy Cable Nitro, 200,000 FE per tick. This would be the best possible cable I think we could get in this mod pack. And it requires dielectric rods, 
nitro crystals and nitro capacitors. And a nitro crystal. Ah! Nitro crystal <laughs> requires a nether star, two blocks of redstone, and a block of blazing crystal, and 200,000 FE inside of uh, an energizing rod? Right, and an energizing rod can only at max do 3,000. We need a lot of these. Is. Capa oh, this is starting an entirely new mod. Okay. Well, they're not the best cable in the mod pack for no reason. Let's try and find an alternative. Uh, ultimate universal cable is 3.27 MFE per tick. Oh, million! That. Uh, 3.2 million. Right. And that is. J oh. That's just elite universal cables around atomic alloys. And elite universal cables are just advanced around re reinforced alloys. Let's make these cables no longer a bottleneck, shall we? Let's just quickly put these in a circle just like that. And uh, then it required, what was it? What type of alloy was it? Let's just alloy. There we go. Uh, was it reinforced alloys? Uh, yes, it was. That gives us elite universal cables. So I'll just grab a stack and then 40 of those. And then we'll just drop that back in there. And then atomic alloys, we only have one of those. No problem. Let's go EMC it. There we go. And give me a stack. And then we just drop the atomic alloys in the center. Then we surround it with the cables. And that gives us the ultimate universal cable. So let's just complete that upgrade, shall we? There we go. We can drop those back in the computer. And I'm pretty sure the ultimate universal cable can't be upgraded any further. I I'm pretty sure it taps out at 3.27 million FE per tick. Um, so now the cables are no longer the bottleneck, the solar panels are, but that shouldn't be an issue because if we fly up here and click on the actual projector, this thing only has a maximum of, what is that, 1,200,000 uh, power at, at any one time anyway, um, so that, I, I'm pretty sure that, that, that'll be fine enough. So, next step would be to figure out a way to connect it. 